Now, the link between the angular frequency and the linear frequency is made through the expressions I've written here, which I'm not going to go through. But of course, you can fe feel free to do that if you require. So from now on, I'm no longer going to write n pi t over l. Instead, I'm just going to write omega sub n times t. Or if I'm using the dummy variable, it'll be omega sub n times r. And that's exactly what I've written in the middle of your screen here. Nothing new except the omega, is, omega sub n is being used. But as I said earlier on, a0, a sub n and b sub n are themselves integrals. And I've just plugged in all the terms in the integrals here. And I know it's starting to get to look messy, but this is nothing new. This is just it all being put together. There are a few things which are of note here. First of all, we have a scaling term involving the period. Also note that look at the integrals that we have here. In this particular integral here, we are inter integrating with respect to dummy, the dummy variable r, which means we're integrating out the variable r, which means this whole integral is going to transform our function of r to one of omega. So we're talking about a transform already. Now, in order for us to go from the discrete Fourier series to Fourier integrals, like I said, we need to discuss the discrete component, which is, of course, omega. We saw earlier on that omega is n pi over l. So how do we work out the difference between two different omegas? Well, we have omega n plus 1 minus omega n is going to be equal to delta omega. And we see that this is equal to pi over l. Or another way of writing it is that delta omega over pi is 1 over l. And you might say, well, so what? What we're going to do now is look at the scaling terms, which I illustrated earlier on, and plug in for delta omega. If I do that, I get the following expression. It does look complicated, but it is no more complicated than any of the expressions we've had in the past. We've just substituted 1 over L for delta omega over pi where applicable. We still have, of course, these kind of transforming integrals here and here. They are still there. So there is a transform of some description occurring. We are integrating on minus L to L, which is, is, is the period. But the important point to note here is that we now have this delta omega. Now, I'm sure you've seen Riemann sums in the past, and I'm also sure that you'll see where this is going. So just like the definition or the derivation of the integrals from the Riemann sums, we look at the limit of delta omega as L goes to, zero, L goes to uh, infinity. So if we do this, we see that the summation is approximated by an integral, and it's very important to note that this integral has a lower limit of zero. And the periodic function f of t subscript l is now the aperiodic function f of t. Also, of course, the limits in these integrals are now minus to positive infinity. But that's in contrast with, the, with the, this particular limit here, which will have a lower limit of zero. So in our integrals, or in our two separate integrals, one of them will go from minus to positive infinity, and one will start at zero and go to infinity. Putting it all together so, we have this particular expression here on the top of your screen. And if we make the, the, these two definitions of a of omega and b of omega, we can rewrite it in the following term in the middle of your screen. We speak of having Fourier integrals. Now, if you're wondering how come we're talking about, we'll say, b of omega instead of b of n, b sub n, well, we're after going from the discrete variable n to the continuous variable omega. So, of course, that is natural for it to happen. I'd like to analyze for a moment 
this particular integral here, calculating a of omega. As I've said in the past, we are integrating out omega. So we're left, pardon me, there's a typo there. So I'm going to start that again. Let's look at the integral to calculate the coefficient a of omega. What's happening here is we're integrating out r and we're left with omega. So we're starting with a function of r, we're performing an integral on it where we are integrating out r and we are returning with a, a function of omega. So we're transforming from r to omega. Similarly here on the right side for b of omega, we're transforming from f of r to b of omega. So these integrals are performing a transform for us.